live from WTKR News 3. Your News at 5 starts right now. Nobody disagrees that they need it. We just don't want it here. New at 5, Chesapeake plans to build a new juvenile justice center, but people in the Deep Creek area say, not in my backyard. Tonight, they're planning to make their argument heard. A teenager accidentally shot and killed. Now a school is using the tragic death to educate their students. We'll show you how. A big cool down ahead for your weekend. The first warning storm team will show you who could be flirting with below freezing temperatures. We're going to see a roller coaster of temperatures over the next several days. Welcome to News 3 at 5. I'm Les Smith. And I'm Barbara Ciara. Taking a live look over the Chesapeake Bay as the sun goes down with our News 3 Skycam network. Oh my, what a pretty sunset. It also means that the temperatures are going down. Chief Meteorologist Patrick Rocky has more on this blustery Thursday. Okay, Patrick, what does this mean for the temperatures ahead? Yeah, we've got a roller coaster of temperatures on the way. And today that roller coaster headed down and the winds headed up. Take a look at some of our peak wind gusts with the cold front that moved through last night. A 44 mile per hour wind gust at one point at Cape Henry in Virginia Beach. Duck on the outer banks. We had a peak wind gust of 39 miles per hour. 36 at the HRBT in Yorktown. A 34 mile per hour wind gust. Thankfully, those winds have died down. This is a look at our current sustained winds and look at this. We're only at around three miles per hour in Hampton five in Virginia Beach, so much, much calmer weather than earlier today. It's a little on the cool side, though. We're in the low 50s right now in Hampton and Virginia Beach, 52 in Chesapeake, 52 also in Elizabeth City. We're in the mid 50s in Norfolk, 54 degrees in Newport News, 56 degrees right now in Moyoc. And temperatures are going to be dropping overnight tonight, but it's not going to be terribly chilly tomorrow morning. We're talking lower 40s inland, maybe a few upper 30s. 41 are forecast for Franklin, 44 in Virginia Beach, 41 to start the day in Chesapeake. Mid and upper 40s, though, for Norfolk and for Portsmouth, 44 to start the day in Newport News, 47 in Hampton. We're talking mid and upper 40s for Melfa and Wallops Island on the eastern shore, around 50 for Kill Devil Hills, mid 40s to start your Friday in Elizabeth City. So we'll keep these mainly clear skies as we take you through the evening and overnight. And yeah, it's going to be a chilly start to the day. But get this, we're talking about temperatures at or even below freezing over the next couple of days. We'll have that coming up in your first warning storm team forecast. New at 5, Chesapeake is proposing a new juvenile justice center meant to house over 100 young inmates. The city plans to have it built on South Military Highway, but residents say, not in my backyard. News 3's Maris Badcock is live with us now with why some of these residents are so upset about it. Well, first residents told me they were shocked to even find out about the project in the first place, but they said, frankly, a jail, even if it's for kids, is a bad look for the neighborhood. Barbed wire and an electric fence line a city-owned, run-down property in Chesapeake off South Military Highway. It's not a jail yet, but that's what city officials want to turn it into. I've heard people that called in and said, oh my gosh, you're going to have barbed wire around this facility. That's not typically the case at all. While the city says residents won't even be able to tell it's a jail, nearby neighbors say they just found out about the plans and they aren't happy about it. We are all upset, number one, that the word didn't get out as well as we thought it should have. Residents found out after city officials passed out this public hearing notice, inviting them to express their concerns. Their main argument, decreasing property values. Nobody disagrees that they need it, we just don't want it here. City officials say they are expecting this kind of reaction at tonight's first public hearing. I want to hear what you have to say, but if all you're saying is burden somebody else instead of me, that's probably not going to be a very effective uh, argument to make. Some local residents may not want a joint juvenile justice center in their backyard, but research shows that if they put it here in Chesapeake, 53% of offenders would be within a one hour drive. And that means more family support for troubled teens. Nobody I have spoke to is against this because we know our kids need help. We are just disappointed and upset that they want to place it right here around all the neighborhood. Tonight, Deep Creek residents are invited to a public hearing to voice their concerns about the new juvenile jail. Both state and city officials will be there to talk about the new facility. Maris Badcock, News 3. Counselors were on hand today at a local high school after a classmate died from an accidental shooting. News 3's Brian Hill joins us live from Hampton High with more on how the school district is using this to educate students on gun safety. Brian? 
Well, school officials say they usually don't talk about these issues unless something like this happened. Today, they had about 20 counselors on site assisting students. Neighbors that I spoke with described the teen as very well mannered and hope that this is a wake up call for others. We were all the pieces. Daniel Backus is still trying to understand what happened just feet from his home Tuesday. Ambulances and police cars were pulling up and I became very concerned. A concern that soon became a nightmare. Backus learned that his 16-year-old neighbor, Kamori Robinson, had been accidentally shot and killed here on Pennsylvania Avenue near Cheryl Road. But he was a very, very good young man. He was sort of like a third son of mine, actually. He would come over quite a few times. Everyone in this street, in this neighborhood right here, is uh, in mourning. A feeling felt by Robinson's fellow crabbers at Hampton High School. Well, the students, of course, are very sad. They're, they, um, they're trying to process exactly what happened. Diana Galata with Hampton City School says counselors are on site helping students grieve and talk about the importance of gun safety. According to a gun report, by the end of 2015, 265 children accidentally shot someone. 19-year-old Caitlin Falcon says because of numbers like that, she never touches her parents' guns. Just safety. We've, like... We've used like BB guns in before, but um, no, we don't really mess around with it. Backus says it'll be a long time before their community moves past this, but hopes it will serve as a lesson learned. I'm hoping that this might spark a little interest in someone who's interested in obtaining a weapon and trying to get to know it unsupervised. Police do not suspect foul play in the shooting, but are still investigating what led to it. Live in Hampton, Brian Hill, News Story. The trial started today for a Navy lieutenant and pilot accused of filming an underage girl in a changing room this summer. Jake Baker was arrested back in June after police say he filmed the underage girl inside an old Navy fitting room in Chesapeake. Now, according to court documents, Baker used his cell phone to record the teen who was changing at the time. Police say the teen noticed him and alerted the store staff who followed Baker out of the store and took down his license plate number as he drove away. Baker's attorney said after the arrest that his client didn't do anything wrong. Baker's trial started at 1 this afternoon. One man was rushed to the hospital after a late night shooting. Officers were called to Melvin Drive in Portsmouth just after 12.30 last night. They were responding to calls about a home invasion, and when they arrived, they found a man who had been shot in the lower body. He was taken to the hospital, and he is expected to recover. If you know anything about this crime, call the crime line at one lock you up The corruption trial involving the Norfolk City Treasurer continues with some explosive new allegations. And News 3's Margaret Cavanaugh is live here with which city councilman may have known something about the alleged Burford bribes. Yeah, a lot of information we were getting today in court. Dwight Etheridge, a star witness for the prosecution and former developer who did work for the city, said he was allegedly paying Burfoot for five years. <laughs> Six at the eight.